All right, so good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is Twist Gaming, where you get to play board games with us. We are coming to you live here from our studio in South Florida, bringing you a new Spotlight episode of our channel here. But first off, let's get some introductions out of the way. As usual, I'm Matt. I'm Josh. And we are joined today with Pat. How are you doing today, Pat? Doing great, thanks. Uh, so tonight we are doing the Spotlight of Court of the Dead, Mourner's Call. Yeah. Uh, this is the... Uh, sideshow IP that the board game has been developed for, and this is releasing on Kickstarter tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Right, Pat? So noon. Yes. Oh, look at that green screen. It's noon in uh, in Florida time for us here on the East Coast. Yep. Uh, so, Pat, can you give us a little bit of background as to what uh, Court of the Dead is and what Court of the Dead Mourners Call is, how it ties it all together? Sure. So this will be high pressure because I'm in the sideshow office, so I have to make sure <laughs> I get all my own way. Um so, the Court of the Dead is uh, a storyline wherein uh, heaven and hell are locked in an endless war with each other. And, and rather than the traditional view of, like, heaven is good and hell is evil, um, they're both kind of terrible in the, in the sense that their war is fueled by our soul energy that they harvest from the dying. And so they create death with the task that he is the harvester of the soul energy um, and Eventually, death gets to the point he doesn't want to do that anymore. He, he sees the corruption of heaven and hell, uh, and he wants to siphon off the soul energy, build his own forces in the underworld, and ultimately overthrow the celestials. Um, and so this game is telling the overarching story of that, right? So we are mourners, so we are dead and in the underworld, and we are exercising our uh, influence over the three factions, which are bone, flesh, and spirit. Uh, we are recruiting mourners, we are recruiting members of the different guilds in the underworld, um, and trying to contribute to this overarching goal of the underworld, but trying to do it better than anyone else. And so there's some um, selfish versus cooperative elements in the game, um, and you're going to have uh, some tough choices to make at times between doing what's best for you and your own ulterior motive and doing what's best for everyone, um, both of which can earn you points and rewards. Fantastic. So, you know, I, I'm a big nerd. I've been on Sideshow's website many a times because I've purchased many a thing from them. Uh, and I remember seeing the Court of the Dead stuff come up. And as I've seen it, the uh, the line, you know, be released and more of the artwork come out, uh, it's absolutely gorgeous, beautiful artwork. And I know that you've been tasked with the fantastic task here of coming up with this lovely board game here. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, how it was linking up the the property there, the backstory, the lore into this game. Yeah, I mean it's been a fantastic project because um, you know, as you said, like I'm I'm a game designer. I do mechanics, and that's where my brain works. Uh, but to be able to come up to the sideshow offices, which are not all that far from our own office, um, and have a really collaborative process where throughout this, um, you know, we've been able to sit down with Tom Gilliland and his team here at Sideshow and talk through the lore and talk through how the individual cards and their mechanics tie to the backstory of some of the characters and often being able to bring in like knowledge and content that's not in the graphic novels quite yet or it's not in the, the comic omnibus or the, uh, the chronicle, um, but having that depth of knowledge that, that Tom brings to the world as the creator of the world um, and being able to really tie all these different aspects of the story so that folks who maybe don't know Court of the Dead can play this game and walk away really having a feel for this world uh, so it, it's been a lot of fun awesome josh do you have any questions for pat before we start talking about a little bit more of the rules explanation of the game yeah, I, th I think we should start digging in all right sounds good uh before we go any further i would like to point out that we do have some giveaways planned for the end of the stream today yeah. uh, so i just threw the link up in chat for all of you watching uh you have the opportunity to enter the giveaway and win a copy of what was it again josh uh it's the court of the dead dealer token so it's a, a deck of cards with a dealer token mm -hmm. with the it uses all the fraction the f faction symbols for the oh. suits and stuff they look really cool so we have uh, two giveaways for that so definitely go check that out uh, in the meantime though josh i need your help with one thing we need yeah. to switch over to the board here so i need you to sprinkle some magic fairy dust on the board there and we're switching over so this is the really awesome board here. This is You can see some of the amazing artwork. There's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, when we first opened up this box, we realized just like kind of how much table real estate that this was, and we were really excited to, to get into the meat and potatoes of it. Uh, so 
Uh, Pat, can you start giving us like a little bit of a broad spectrum of what kind of game we're looking at here in terms of the uh, mechanisms and backbone, and then we can get into the uh, the actual rules explanation. Sure. So at, at its core, really, this is a dudes on a map, uh, area majority type of game. Um, what kind of makes it interesting and, and different from some of the other games is you have a dual area majority or a dual majority uh, rule going on. So you can see the locations there, and the player with the most figures in a location is going to control that location and get the effects. But then there's also the six guilds, which are the six different uh, main sculpts uh, that you see there on the track at the bottom. And having the most figures of a, of a guild is going to also earn you a majority bonus. Um, so that's a, a dual thing that players have to keep track of, um, all while managing the two external threats, which are how aware the celestials are of what you're doing, which is the track um, on the left there, and then this um, internal force that uh, kind of feeds on, on power and corruption um, and can ultimately turn a mourner into a raker, which is more of a, a mindless beast. And so uh, players need to be careful how they use their power and how greedy they get um, in trying to meet their own ends because they can ultimately lose figures and have them become corrupted by that force as well. So that's our Dreads Grip track here on the uh, the right-hand side of the screen. Yes. All right, so uh, in the pre-stream, before we went live, 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 uh, we did some of the background setup work. Yeah. Uh, so we set up our boards here. We each have uh, three influence on each one of the faction tracks here. Uh, so we've got uh, three on the bone, three on the flesh, three on the spirit. So this is actually the individual player map here, a little bit of an up-close and personal. So that's the influence, and it's marked out there, so that's what we're starting with uh, on all three tracks. Uh, we also went ahead and... Uh, there's these cards called the Ulterior Motive cards, which is a secret objective that we each have. And uh, this is an example of one of them here. So we're each dealt uh, one of each of the faction's ulterior motives. And it gives you a little bit more of a you know, secret objective so yeah. the game isn't telegraphed uh, who's winning the entire time. Um, when you pick one of those, we're going to be basically presenting that we are of that faction for this game. So this is an example here. Uh, the Flesh faction is going to gain two points for each flesh guild figure, and that's that little symbol there, uh, you control at the end of the game. Uh, so, Pat, can you tell us a little bit more about the difference between factions and guilds? Sure. So the, the factions are the three main groups within the Underworld. So you have Bone, Flesh, and Spirit. Um, and all of the characters align, uh, for the most part, with one of these factions. Um, and each one has its own kind of feel and flavor um, and for folks who are, are new to the Court of the Dead, you can jump on their website um, and take, or go to mournerscall.com, which is our site for the game, and take the faction quiz, uh, find out which one you personally most align with, so that can give you some, some influence in how you play the game. The guilds are um, what they sound like. They're guilds that exist within the underworld um, and have different sort of functionality. And in this particular game, each of the three factions has two guilds within it. Uh, so you can see uh, over Matt's shoulder there on the screen uh, the two bone uh, guilds, which are the Mortis Knighthood. Uh, and the Mortis Knights are, are really the ones who do the soul harvesting, um, and so that's that's their primary task. And then next to them, the Council of Osteomancy, um, who are um, more the, the bureaucrats, if you will. And so as you can see that that sculpt has the books and the scroll, whereas the knight has the big shield and the sword, so uh, kind of playing into their roles in the story. And then each one of those guilds, uh, as you said before, if you have majority share of those, you're going to get a bonus at the end of each phase. There is the uh, uh, the uh, re resolution phase that we're going to be uh, getting the bonuses from those. Correct. All right, so then on this map here, we've got all these locations. Again, that's another area control thing where if you've got the majority share there, you are going to get the bonuses from those. And again, that's during the resolution phase. And then the ultimate task there is we're going to try to get the most points. That's the, the win condition there. Yeah. And we're going to do that through accumulating uh, both influence and unity. Uh, so can you talk to us a little bit about uh, unity and influence within the game? Sure. So as you uh, take different actions... Uh, sometimes it's going to cost you some of your influence within a faction, and sometimes it's going to gain you influence. And so that's all going to be tracked there on your player board uh, for the three factions of Bone, Flesh, and Spirit. Um, and then you can see at the top of that player board are the point values associated with um, each position on the board. So uh, sometimes moving up a single space can jump you from three to six points. 
um, on an influence track. Uh, but by the same token, spending that influence might cost you those points. Uh, so it's a really careful balancing act of when you use it. Um, and one of the biggest ways you'll end up spending that is to move around the board, which uh, we can cover in a bit. Um, unity is sort of the timer in the game because what the unity tokens represent um, is our collective progress towards um, our ultimate goal of being powerful enough to overthrow the Celestials um, and take control. And so um, at the start of the game, you count out a number of those based on the number of players. And as they are collected, it sort of counts down the timer of the game. Uh, when the last one's collected, that signifies that we're in the final round of play uh, and that will end the game. And typically you're gonna earn those for doing things that contribute to the greater good. So um, it's, it's a little bit of a selfish play to get the points, but it's also uh, sometimes doing things that may benefit other players or give them some more wiggle room in terms of the tracks that are on the board and those external threats. So uh, it's, it's often a careful balancing act there. And then finally, on the player boards here, we've got two more spaces. We've got the Etheria space, which Etheria is more or less your uh, currency to get upgrades for your guilds and factions in the game. Right, Pat? Yeah, so in, in the storyline, Etheria is the, the soul energy that's being harvested and, and passed up through the Dearth Forge location. That's how it's channeled up into Heaven and Hell for their use. Um, and so we're siphoning some of that off for our own means uh, in the game. And that's those little... Uh, nice crystal pieces there that kind of represent that that energy. Yeah, there you go. And then the last space there is going to be our crypt. So our crypt is the uh, area in waiting that our uh, guild members are going to be summoned to before we move them to an area on the map, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Any any new figure is basically going to enter enter play through the crypt. Uh, once it's in the crypt, it's considered in play and, and part of the game and counts, uh, but it's not yet vying for control of the location. All right, very good. So then finally, one of the things that in, we did in the beginning of the game, when we choose our ulterior motives, uh, we get which faction we belong to for the game, and then we get one of the starting uh, cards associated with that yeah. faction. Uh, so this is just an ex and we're going to get the associated... Uh, mini guild figure as well to put in our crypt area. So this is an example of one of them. This is, uh, so I am the bone faction. This is the card that I had drawn for my starter. So I've got uh, Warden Mavego. I'm going to butcher some of the names. I'm going to do my best, though. Uh, so this is Keeper of the Keys. And this is once per round, you may turn any other mourner card face down to deactivate its ability for the remainder of the round. So basically, I'm going to be able to nullify one of Josh's mourner cards. And this is this is a mourner card here. Uh, each round. Yeah. Um, and just to note, the little banner on the top right means it's one of the starting mourner cards that you could have. Um, yes. So there's four of each one, and then the, all the additional ones get shuffled back in the deck. So we'll see more starter ones, and we'll see some different ones later. And Josh, which one are you playing as, just so we get a feel of some of the different the abilities here? The Minders Bind. One of the few I can actually name. There you go. So the Minders Bind. Uh, this is a spirit one, so Josh is the, yep. the spirit faction. And this is, during the cleanup phase, you're going to gain two spirit influence. Yep. So at the end of every uh, round of gameplay, gonna uh, you're going to get two influence on your spirit track, which, again, spirit uh, influence rather is used to move your characters around the map, and we're going to get into that a little bit more later, but it's also worth a sliding point scale as well. All oh, right. Matt chooses a jerk starter. What a surprise. It's randomly dealt. It's random, yeah. It's it, actually it, it was randomly random. dealt, chat, so... <laughs> and then finally, the uh, we've got two more decks of cards. So one more here is going to be the Wallows. So this is going to be our turn-by-turn, round-by-round -turn, uh, objectives, essentially, that we're trying to complete. And there's a variety of them here. So this is an example of a battle. Uh, so this is, uh, as Pat was saying before, uh, a Raker attack. So Rakers were the kind of mindless versions of the like corrupted Mourners, right? Yes. And so each of these cards has a location that we have to be at to trigger it, and then as an action, we can go ahead and uh, attempt to win the battle by rolling some dice and then supplementing yep. our die roll with the Etheria as well. Uh, so, Pat, how many actions do we get per turn? Yeah, so the way this works is, is to keep turns short and kind of alleviate the, the experience you have in some games with a lot of AP as people take 12 actions. Um, in this case you get one action per turn. So um, that might be moving a figure, recruiting a figure. Um, so the, the goal here was to keep turns fairly short, um, but during the action phase to allow players to take many turns in succession. 
So this is an example of our action uh, abilities there. So we could either play a court card, and we'll get into that in just a second. We haven't shown those off. That's the last deck of cards. Uh, there's Recruit, which is going to allow us to spend Etheria, so that's that currency we were talking about, yep. uh, to either get a guild figure or a mourner card. And then each mourner card actually will give you a guild figure. Mm -hmm. uh, so the mourner cards are obviously worth more. That's why you have to spend five. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're going to give you more things as well. And then each of those, when you play them, you see that flaming purple skull there. That's the Dreads Grip. So we're going to increase the Dreads Grip threat meter by one for each of those. And so the higher and higher that that creeps, the worse off we are. So that's one of those things that we're trying to manage the entire yeah. time. Uh, relocate guild figures, that's moving around the map. Activating mourner cards, so that's the ability that uh, we just showed off for my bone card yeah. and your spirit card. And then finally pass, because we get uh, an unlimited amount of turns within the action phase. Uh, but it ends when everyone passes consecutively, right, Pat? Yeah, that's correct. So eventually what will happen is, you know, you'll become satisfied kind of with your position or you're just out of influence in Ethereum and, and, and get stuck. Um, though sometimes passing and letting people act after you, which will then give you another opportunity to take a turn, can be a good strategy so that you kind of get the last maneuver in a, in a particular round. So if I pass, I'm not done for the round necessarily. Yeah. I'm just done for that cycle. Gotcha. Yeah, so as long as Josh takes a turn after you, then you're going to get a shot. But if he passes, then, then you're going to miss your shot. Okay. Uh, so just a few more examples of some Wallows cards here. We've got locations as well. So this is the, the Nick turn tree. So the first time you reduce the uh, Celestial Suspicion track by one, you're going to gain a unity. Yep. So again, that's giving you a little bit more of an incentive to go ahead and do uh, something for the greater good. Uh, and then we've got the... Uh, we've got an artifact card here. So artifacts are slightly different as well. So, Pat, can you talk to us about the artifacts? Yeah, so these artifacts are um, represent some really prized items that exist out in the wallows, which is this uh, wild region around the city. Um, and so in this case, you're going out and, and looking for an artifact. So you have a, a task at the top there. In this case, um, your goal is to have the most of your guild figures in Life's End, which is the location um, on the board. If you can pull off that mission, then it, it represents sort of you, you finding this artifact. Uh, once you have the artifact, you keep it for the rest of the game, and it gives you that ability listed on the bottom there, which in this case is um, you can add plus one to any die roll you make, uh, which can be really useful for fighting those rakers or in a couple other uh, parts of the game as well. All right. And then so finally, the last deck of cards that we have to show off here are the court cards. So these are the oversized, like, tarot-sized cards, and each of these is kind of the uh, the more pronounced uh, characters from the game, and each of these have two actions that can be performed on them. So when you play them, you're going to only uh, choose which one of those actions yeah. to play. So right. how, do, how do we get these court cards, Pat? Sure, so this is going to be a, a card draft very similar to... Uh, games like Seven Wonders. Um, so you're going to deal out uh, a number depending on the number of players, um, and then uh, from your hand you'll choose one to keep, and then you'll pass the rest of the hand uh, to your neighbor. Who will, uh, you, the neighbor to your other side will then pass you a hand. You'll choose one of those cards and continue the process until everyone has a, a full hand. Um, and this gives you an opportunity to kind of choose uh, what cards you want to use strategically, which ones are going to help in your ulterior motive, or in some cases, just which ones you don't want to pass to your neighbor. All right. So the, I think the last thing here is just to go through what the actual phase order is for each round and then talk about what ends the game and then how we determine the winner, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, so the phase order here, it's got eight distinct phases. lays it out very nicely on this card here. So we've got the ethereal distribution. Uh, so at the beginning of each phase, uh, round, uh, we're going to contribute Etheria to the pool, and then whoever's first player is going to actually kind of quasi-determine how to split that up. Uh, so we'll actually show that off in just a second when we start the game, because that's the yeah. first action you do uh, when you start the game. Uh, next up is the Wallows cards. That's where we're going to draw our turn action, essentially. Yep. Uh, our turn objective, rather. Uh, we've got our court card drafting, so Josh is sorting those out now. So he's going to set up two piles of six cards each, 
and we're going to do a drafting mechanism where we're going to uh, choose one and pass the deck, uh, the two decks back and forth yep. until we've got a hand of five cards discarding the last one. Uh, and that actually changes a little bit based on the number of players. Yep. Uh, our action phase, which is where we're going to do all of those actions until eventually both of us pass in a row. Uh, we're going to manage the Dreads Grip and the Celestial Tithe uh, threat meters there. And we'll show those off a little bit more in depth. Then we resolve the locations, which is when we see who's got the majority share on each one of the map locations and the uh, guild locations. And then we get the bonuses for that. And then finally, clean up. So we basically, it's resetting and then doing it all over again. Uh, so, Pat, what determines the end of the game? How do we know when we're finished? So when all of the, the Unity tokens that are up there on the upper left on the board have been collected, um, that's going to signify the end of the game. If uh, that happens during the action phase, then each player will get one more uh, turn to take a single action before proceeding through the rest of the phases that you just outlined there. If it happens later, like say during the uh, Celestial Tides phase, uh, then you would just play out the remaining phases, the uh, resolving locations and guilds, and the final cleanup phase, and then proceed into final game scoring. All right. So, Pat, what's a typical... How many rounds is a typical game? Uh, the vast majority of, of games that I've played have been three rounds. Um, occasionally, if players are um, choosing a strategy that's, that's heavy on collecting unity, uh, it might wrap up towards uh, like late in the second phase uh, or the second round, uh, but typically the third round. Okay. All right, so I am playing as the uh, the white colored pieces here, and you're playing as the orange colored pieces. Okay. Uh, first player is determined by who's the oldest. It's you, buddy. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I have no, I have no issues. With so, that. but you get the sweet death mini here. So okay. I'm gonna shut it off a little bit more into the camera. So you are death the first round, the all taker. So congratulations. Uh, so okay. death being death also gives you some perks, right, Pat? Yeah, so Death is, is a powerful, he's the most powerful uh, figure in the storyline. And so uh, controlling him or having his influence allows you to break one tie. Um, so you can either use that to break a tie uh, for the majority in a location or the majority in, in a guild. But once you've used him to break a tie, you can't use him for another tie that same round. Okay, so it's not unlimited tie breaking. Yeah, but it's one, one crucial tie. one that you could get some help with. All right. So All right. Uh, Matt, first step of our... So the first step of the phase is going to be the ethereal distribution. So, Josh, you're going to roll two die, and that's equal to the number of players. So go ahead and roll, and then this is going to determine mm -hmm. Move that card. how much Etheria you're going to be splitting around. Uh, uh, whopping four Etheria, Matt. Oh, boy. We're, we're rich. So there's four Etheria, and you're going to split this into a uh, number of piles that's equal to number of players plus one. And you can... S one of one or more than one of those piles can have zero. Uh, and the way that's going to work is he's splitting up those Etheria into piles, and then I am actually going to be the one that chooses first. First, So, so it, I'm prevents, split it prevents you from saying, I'm going to get all the Etheria yeah. for myself. Because I'm going to be last pick. Um, so I'm going to split into two piles of two, and there's one blank pile. Okay, so the reason that that's important is because we've got the Celestial Suspicion track on the right here. And at the end of every round of the game, uh, we have to manage that. And there's, if, uh, if you see on this track here, uh, let, me, let me zoom in a little bit. I could, I could show that off a little bit more in depth. Uh, but if you look at that track, there's a sliding scale. And then this track's going to go up and down based upon our cards. But then there's these icons on the, on the right-hand side. And so it's starting off at 3 plus the number of players. So at the end of the round, we need to have Etheria equal to 3 plus... Two, for, so five total Etheria, uh, in order to prevent bad stuff from happening. Yep. So that's essentially heaven and hell gets kind of suspicious with what we're doing, and they come around and they they beat us up. Yep. <laughs> uh, so the Dearth Forge, anything that winds up in the Dearth Forge, which is that third pile, yeah, uh, is going to be contributed to that as well. Yep. Uh, so then there's a blind bidding mechanism that we'll show off later, but we don't want there to be not enough, because that could be very bad for us. Mm -hmm. uh, though, I'm going to be greedy, and I'm going to take the pile of two. Yeah, I know you were, and I'm going to take my pile of two. I'm not going to leave any there. And yep. I'm going to hope that we don't spend it all, and uh, we could save it. Oh, boy. That's exciting. Okay, so that is the ethereal distribution. Next is the Wallows cards. So, so Josh, can you please hand each of us a Wallows card? And these are public information, so we're going to see what each other's... Uh, yep. 
goal is for this round. So I've I've got a fight. Uh, I'm going to be... The Curio Cryptus is where I have to be. So if I have a guild figure at that location, I can use my action to then fight the, the Geddes of Ancor. So... If I win, which is rolling a four through six, and I can supplement that with Etheria, I'm yep. going to gain a unity and then subtract one from the Dreads Grip meter. But if I lose or fail to fight him, I lose a unity and then add one to the Dreads Grip threat. Pat, what happens if I have no unity? Um, if you have no unity, the only penalty then would be the Dreads Grip increasing. Um, and so early in the game, you can you can choose the sort of selfish thing to let the Raker run free, but uh, often... Those unity points are, are clutch at the end of the game, so it's, it's worthwhile to go after it. Or, like, first round, you could just go there and fight it, and then if he doesn't have any unity yet, it's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, so Josh got the commune uh, with the stones of Long Shadow Hills. This is the location, uh, and this is the first time you reduce the Dreads Grip meter by one. You're going to gain a unity and then add one to the Celestial Suspicion meter. Yep. So a little good, a little bad. You know, we'll see how that goes. So then next up, we're going to have our court card drafting. So Josh already dealt these out. Yep. We each have six cards. We're going to wind up with a hand of five. But after we choose one, we're going to pass the pile to the next person. So the little bit of, do I want this for myself or do I want to make sure that Josh doesn't get it? Yeah, that's, that's what it always is. And we're just going to keep passing this back and forth. Uh, hmm. Oh, boy. There's some good stuff in here. Yeah, I came out with a very strong deck. There you go. So I chose my one. Up to two now. I know there's some. I did not get such a good uh, choice of cards there. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Not thrilled with those, right? Not thrilled with those. Okay. Oh, you didn't. You didn't take either of those guys. Maybe. I don't know. I'm gonna go with that. Okay. Almost done. Um. Hmm. Yep, I like that one. <coughs> I know which one you picked. Because I was thinking about picking that yeah, one. Yeah, because I knew you were picking that one. Ah, oh, you gave me the... Yep. Hmm. Um. Okay. And then the final one gets discarded back to this pile at the bottom. Okay. Uh, so then once we actually use these, we're going to put them in the discard pile face up because there are some cards that allow you to kind of cycle through those and pick back up what has already been played, but not ones that have not been played yet. Yeah. So... Uh, so all of the court cards are drafted. We're going to go into the action phase. So, Josh, you are death. You go first. I'm first? You are first. Um. Whatever shall you do. Okay. Let's, let's just start with this. So I'm going to use the Oracle of... So Elianastus. Yeah. So Adams. this is going to get... Which action are you doing, top or bottom? Top action. Top action. So top action is going to be you're going to lose one Etheria. You're going to gain one Spirit card. So the Spirit card that you gained is going to be uh, Soko Fairy. So the Whisper Sakafri. Thief. Sakafri. There we go. That sounds better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this is once per action phase, you may spend two of any influence to exchange a court card in your hand for one previously played this turn. So that's exactly that ability that I was talking about. Yep. That's very convenient. Uh, and then you're going to gain a Dreadsbane Order uh, mini guild figure there. So you can put one on the track, and then that goes into your yep. uh, crypt. And so then you're also going to increase the Dreads Grip threat by one, okay. and you're going to add one to your Spirit Influence. So then this card goes in the discard pile. I am going to... Whatever shall I do? I am going to play Zyal, the Great Osteomancer. Uh, so this is going to minus one. Uh, so I'm doing the top one. It's minus yep. one to my uh, bone influence. Then I'm going to gain a bone card. So I got Clattershanks Esquire. Love the name. Hapless Scrutineer of the Hereafter. So if you control Mortis Veth during the Resolve Locations phase, I'm going to gain two bone influence. Okay, so that's important for me. Also going to increase the Dreads Grip Threat Meter by one. And then I'm going to gain two Etheria. So I increase my Etheria. He goes in my Crypt. And then uh, one other thing is I am going... Oh, you gave me my Mini. Perfect. So that was the Council of Osteomancy Mini. So I'm going to put... Uh, actually, I'm going to increase that token because I have two of them now. 
So then that card goes away. Josh, it's your turn. I'm going to play uh, Relic. I can pronounce Relic that. Ravlatch. So this is the Paladin of the Dead. And, and I'm going to use the top ability. I'm going to look at the top two wall cards, choose one to keep, and discard the other one. Okay. So this is going to essentially give you the opportunity to so take a, a secondary card. action uh, that you can complete for some more bonus. So you got reinforced the Inquisitor's Assault. So if your spirit influence is above six, you're going to gain one of uh, which one of the guild figures is that? That's the Grave um, Dancer Circle. Dreadsbane Order. Oh, the Dreadsbane Order. Okay. Yeah. So that goes over there. So I don't want your spirit to get up there. Back to my turn, though. And I'm going to use this opportunity to... You know what? I'm going to play my Warden Mavego, and I am going to uh, once per round cancel another action. So I'm going to cancel your ability to take a card from the discard pile. I'll take a card from the discard pile? Yeah. Okay. And now it's back to your turn. Uh, quick question, Pat. Sure. Um, these wall cards need to just be done by the end of the round or by the end of the action phase? Uh, by the end of the round. So if, okay. if something you do in the resolve locations or guild phase gives you the, the thing you need, uh, then you get it. But otherwise, they're discarded during the cleanup phase. Okay. Sweet. That's all I needed to know. Uh, so it is your turn again there, Josh. Uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get myself some money. Money, 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 money. Your favorite character. So Mortigul, he's going to get plus three Etheria. So you're going to gain three Etheria there. Getting all the stuff to spend. I mean, I can't blame you. So then what am I going to do here? Hmm. I am going to... Oh, man. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spend five Etheria, and I am going to... What are you buying? That's a good question. I don't know what I'm buying. Um... Oh, Okay. I'm going to go ahead and buy a uh, flesh card. So I gained Madame Vexisti, Master of the Shroud Dreaves. So I'm going to gain a Shroud Dreaves Coven uh, mini, Josh. And so recruiting the individual guild figures costs two Etheria instead of three. Uh, it still adds plus one to the Dreads Grip, but it's cheaper for me to buy more stuff. And then this is going to stay in play as well. Back to you, Josh. All right. Spent my theory, which might not be a good idea, but <laughs> we'll see. What do I want to do? Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go here. So you're playing Orgast. So Orgast, the Arbiter Actually, of Souls. Actually, I don't want to play that. You yet. don't want to play that? Okay, that's that's a takesy backsy. That's a takesy backs. Um, where do I want to go on the board? So there's a couple opportunities. And so one thing to point out is that all the spaces on the board have a faction associated with it. Uh, so in order to move your uh, guild figures there, you have to spend an influence of that faction type uh, per each guild figure you want to spend to that, uh, move to that space. Yep. So for one of his actions, he could spend uh, two flesh influence to move the two guild figures from his crypt into a flesh space or something to that effect. Or he can play this. Uh, so Galavar is uh, going to allow him to complete a guild movement without spending the associated cost. So, go here. so you're moving over to Dearth Forge. Okay. I will... Hmm. I shall also send someone to Dearth Forge. So I'm going to send my uh, flesh faction over to Dearth Forge. You're welcome. So now we could fight over it. Yeah, we could fight over it. I mean, we're gonna fight over it. So he does have death, though. So he uh, can break a tie he if he so tie. desires. And that might be the only tie on the board at the moment, so I might not care. Indeedly doodly. Um. So where are you going now, Josh? I'm gonna spend one bone to go to the gates. The uh, Vadlim Gates. It's hard to read upside down. I will also spend a bone 
to move into Mortis Vef. Okay. Is that where your fight is? Uh, no, it is not. Where is my fight? My fight I is don't. at the Curious Cryptus. Curio Cryptus. So where is Curio Cryptus? Uh, Curio the bottom Cryptus of the map bottom there. Right okay. there. Creation number three. Um, I feel like this is a waste, but... Why? Whatever are you doing, Josh? Actually, um... What are you doing? You're gonna pass your turn, right? Uh, we're gonna play. We're gonna play this. Okay, so you're playing our guess now. So which one are you doing, top or bottom action? We're the top action. So top action. Select any player to contribute two to the Dearth Forge. I'm assuming you're picking yourself. Okay. So so it's either you or myself. Correct. But I'm gonna pick you. Okay, so I contribute my one Etheria to the Dearth Forge. Yep. And then we're each gonna grab a Unity. Yep. So I get a unity and you get a unity. Yep. Oh, I know what you're going to do. <laughs> you have no... I have no Pat, Pat's got a smirk. He, he knows yeah. exactly what's going on. Yep, I have no Etheria. <laughs> you have no Etheria. Yeah. <sighs> might have hurt myself there. You might have. Might have. You went all in with your uh, Etheria. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to spend a flesh... Uh, influence, and I'm going to move to Curio Cryptus. Okay. Back to you. I'm um, I'm done. I'm going to really pass. Oh yeah, man, I've got a lot of stuff nothing to, else do for me to do. All right, so then I'm going to fight now. So you also messed up my fight. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You have, you have no backup. I I still beat him. Yeah, so I defeat the Raker. So I'm going to gain a uh, unity, and then we're going to decrease the Dreads Grip meter by one. Okay. Josh, back to you. Uh, I will pass. Passing again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, pass. I'm chilling with death over here, waiting for you to finish up. <laughs> um, hmm. Okay, so I will. Spend any. Hmm. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to play uh, Oglavale and the Executioner there. So uh, I'm gonna be mean and I'm going to spend a spirit influence, and then I'm going to send this guy back to the supply. So he goes away. All right, so I no longer have that. Back to you, Josh. But you still get to keep the mourner card. Yeah, I still get to keep the mourner card. So it's, it's not a complete loss for you. It's not a complete loss. You got Etheria up the wazoo. I do. So, Pat, what happens if we don't have enough Etheria? To pay off at the For end? the time, uh, both of the meters will increase by two, and the player or players who contributed the least amount will lose two unity. Okay. And if I do do it, I'll get... Th three unity. I'll get three unity. And I'll get nothing and you'll because get I can't contribute anything. There's, I thought there was a negative. So uh, negative? One influence. Okay. Yeah, so I, I would have gotten a, a unity if I contributed something. Okay. But alas. So now my idea is: Do I want to gain the unity, or screw gain the me unity, over? or screw Matt over more? I mean, I know what you want deep down. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I want deep down. Um, I'm gonna pass right now. Okay. So I am going to play. Uh, X-Rail. Okay. So that is going to give me... Uh, I'm going to take the Unity. So I'm going to take plus one Unity, and then I'm going to tracks reduce... Tracks going to go nowhere. Yeah, the track's already at zero, so that's fine. But I get to take another turn. And I'm going to... Oh, okay, take another turn. Yeah, I'm going to play Death. Okay, which one are you doing? So I'm going to do the top one, because there's no reason to... I mean, I would only get a unity because both of the other tracks are at zero already. Chaz asking how many times can I pass the round? Um, till we keep going till we both pass, but I could jump back in at any time. Yep. So give me death, please. Yeah, you can have death chill over by you. Uh, Josh, it's your turn. My turn. I will spend three ethereal. Hmm. I'm gonna spend three ether ethereal. Ethereal. And, and what are you going to do with that? I'm going to buy my person back. 
Okay. So that goes into your crypt. Yep. Okay. So which one are you buying? Same one? Yeah, same one. Okay. So your three ethereum, you go back into the pool on the bottom Another of the board Another grave dancer. And you're also going to increase the dreads grip by one. Yep. I'm going to play shard. So shard is going to decrease the dreads grip. I'm doing the top one. Top one. Yeah. So increase the decrease the dreads grip. The uh, celestial suspicion track is going to increase. Okay. I'm going to gain a unity, and then I'm going to gain a influence of any kind. So what influence do I want? I'm going to go ahead and get the bone influence, just because I feel like I'm going to wind up using that more. Josh, it's back to you. I'm going to spend a bone influence to go over here. To I can't read that. Uh, Calvum Harrows. Okay. And I am now going to pass. Um, I will also pass. Okay. So that ends the action phase. Okay. What's uh, next? We're going to go to the Dreads Grip Threat. So the Dreads Grip Threat, let me zoom in on that to show it off a little bit. Uh, so the Dreads Grip Threat meter on the right-hand side of the board there is a sliding scale from 0 to 10. And that's going to increase and decrease every time we've been uh, getting guild members yep. recruited. Uh, so that's something we have to manage. And then so for w 0 through 2... There's a 3 next to it. For 3 through 6, there's a 2. And for 7 through 8, there's a 10. So what those mean is that's seven the maximum. 9, there's a 1. Yeah, I'm sorry. 7 through 9, <laughs> there's a 1. Thank you. Whatever. And 10 bad <laughs> stuff happens. Yep. Uh, so those numbers, 3, 2, 1, on the right-hand side, uh, are the maximum number of guild figures that are allowed to be within any of the locations yep. uh, at that time. So if... if Say there right now, if there was four guild members on any location, uh, there would have to be uh, uh, the dreads grip takes over. So for every figure that you have there, you would roll a d6. On uh, if you roll a one, yep. they die. They go back. They become a, a raker. So yep. they they go back to the the pool. Uh, if you roll a two, they get returned to your crypt. And then a four through six, every three through six. Every, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, three through six, everyone's fine. You can't count today. I can't count today. Uh, but three through six, everyone's fine. Yep. So that is the negative there. And then if that meter ever gets to ten, some really gnarly stuff happens. So Pat, do you, off the top of your head, can you tell us what happens when we get to a ten on the dread script threat meter? Sure. Um, so the player who triggered it, um, either by contributing the lease during the tithe or uh, by forcing it to go up by recruiting an extra figure or whatever the case may be, uh, is going to lose a uh, mortar cart from their supply. Um, and the player to their left is going to pick uh, which mourner card they lose. Uh, so, uh, in addition, all players will lose a figure of the type represented on that card. That's, that's nasty. mean. That's really mean. All right. Uh, so, then that, so we resolve that, and there's only one player on any of the spaces, so we're fine. One guild member. Uh, so then going to the other side of the board, we're going to do the Celestial Tithe phase. So Celestial Tithe... Uh, as we said before, we are at one on the Celestial Suspicion thing uh, meter, so uh, we have to have three plus number of players so five. of theory to pay. So that's five. There's we one, have one in the Dearth Forge. So now we get to blind bid. So we take our Etheria off our player boards, put it under the table. We're going to talk about who's contributing what. Matt's contributing nothing. I don't have four. anything to contribute. So, Josh, are you... Are you passing us or are you failing us? I, I don't have enough to pass us. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. I contributed zero. Josh contributed one. So in total, that's two. Two is less than five. That, that is true. So some bad stuff happens. So we have failed the Celestial Tithe phase, Pat. So can you, can you let me know what happens to my poor soul now? Sure. So uh, first things first is both of those tracks are going to increase by two. Uh, so both the suspicion and the the dread uh, grip are going to advance there, which is bad for everybody. Uh, but then, Matt, because you contributed the least by contributing nothing, um, you're going to get the penalty, which is to lose two of your unity tokens. Uh, and those are not going back to the supply, but rather out of the game. Okay, so it doesn't increase the length of the game when you lose your unity tokens. Correct. Okay. All right. Up next. Thanks, Josh. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, so after the Celestial Tithe phase, now we're going to resolve locations and guilds. So we're going to go uh, in order. So each one of the locations has a number on it, and that's the order that we're going to resolve those. Right, Pat? Yep. Yes. Uh, so starting off at number one is the Dearth Forge. That's little old me. And so if you're on that, you're going to gain three Etheria if you're controlling it. So I'm going to gain three Etheria. Next up, position two. That is you, Josh. Yep. So that is the, uh, the Valdum Gates. 
Fadlam Gates, rather. So it's going to be minus one to the Dreads Grip. Okay. Uh, plus one of any influence. Plus one Unity. So here's your Unity token. And then plus one to the Celestial Suspicion Meter. Uh, look at this, Matt. So this is uh, Commune with the Stones. So this is the first time you reduce the Dreads Grip by one, you're going to gain a Unity and increase the Celestial Suspicion by one. So Celestial Suspicion goes up again, and then you get another Unity. So there you are. Uh, next up is position three, so that's me. That is the Curio Cryptus. So I am going to get uh, plus two of any influence, but to two different tracks. So I'm going to gain one spirit and one flesh. Okay. Uh, position five, or position four, rather. So that's also me. That's Mortis Veth. I'm going to gain plus two to any one track. So I'm going to gain plus two to my bone influence. Okay. I also have Clattershanks. Uh, which is my Mourner's card here, which is if you control Mortis Veth during the Resolve phase, which I do, I'm going to gain plus two to my Bone Influence. So I'm going to get two more Bone Influence there. So one, two. Okay. Uh, next up is five. That's you, Josh. You're going to gain one uh, Bone Guild figure of your choice yeah. and add one to the uh, Dreads Grip threat, or you don't have to do that. You no. can instead up your Influence by one. Oh, I'm having a guy. Okay. So what are you getting? Uh, I'm getting a Mortis Knight. I figured that much. <laughs> it's a good choice. I want my money. Yeah. Okay. You prevented me from getting it before. No one on six, no one on seven, no one on eight, no one on nine. Uh, and then ten, I did have someone there, but I had to kill him. So not anymore. Okay. Uh, Eleven, twelve is no one. So now we're going to do the actual uh, guilds. So Mortis Knighthood, you just got one there, Josh. So you have majority control. So that is three Etheria. I'm rich. Uh, next up is the uh, Court of Osteomancy, Council of Osteomancy. So that's me. I have majority. So I'm going to gain plus two influence. So I'm going to go ahead and gain two bone influence. Uh, next up is the Dreadsbane Oracle, or Order rather. And that is you're going to gain the Dreadsbane token. So what does that token do? So that token uh, is going to give Josh immunity to the dice rolling effect for the Dredge Grip threat. Um, so his, his figures are protected. Um, this is especially important as you get into uh, four-player games and late in the game where it becomes very crowded on the board to be able to overthrow a location and get the majority there with no, no threat from the Dredge Grip is, is quite a, a powerful play. So it allows you to kind of swarm spots more. Yep. Uh, so then, Josh, your next one is the Grave Dancer Circle. So you're going to minus one to the Dreads Grip Threat Meter, and you're going to gain a Unity. So you're gaining another Unity there. Uh, no one's on the con uh, Conclave of Shadows, and then I have someone on the uh, the Coven, so the Shroud Reef's Coven, and that is going to be add one uh, Guild figure and then add one to the th uh, Dreads Grip. So go ahead and do that. I'm going to I'm going to take a uh, Mortis Knighthood. Okay. So I, I'm going to fight you for that money. Oh, I don't want your, your base. I, I want to give you my base. <laughs> that's my nice night. try, though. Okay. And that's going to be the end of the resolution phase. So then we just need to clean up. Uh, so the so cleanup is going to be returning uh, the uh, court cards to the pile, shuffling those back together. Uh, we're going to get rid of our Wallows cards. No, I increase my spirit by two. Oh, that's me. brings me up to six spirit. And that is if your spirit is above six. So it's above six. Oh, do I need it six or a bar? So you needed seven plus there, Josh. I, then I would have fixed what I did because I got one influence throughout the... Okay, okay. Fixing my one thing. I get myself a bone instead. I'll give you another takesy back. So you're going to gain a... Uh, uh, Dreadsbane or, uh, order card. Okay. Or mini, I'm sorry. Guild figure. So our Wallows cards go away. Okay. So those are going to get replaced. Uh, we go ahead and refresh our uh, hey guys. Mourner cards. Yep. And then, since I am now death, I am going to be the one that rolls to see how much Ethereal we get during the uh, Ethereal distribution phase. Okay. Can, you, can you roll better than a four? I rolled a seven. I That's saw the better. one, and I got nervous, so I rolled a seven. Uh, so let's see, seven. I have to divide that into three piles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So right now, 
the Celestial Suspicion meter is going to require seven total Etheria. Okay. Oh, jeez. <sighs> and, and I'll point out that Josh ends up with an interesting choice here as well because he's got some Etheria on his board. He can choose to pass on taking any pile and instead to gain two influence. Um, so he has that option available, which would leave more Etheria potentially for the Dearth Forge, um, but always a tough choice to make. So I'm going to go ahead and make one pile of three and then two piles of two. Yeah, I'm being greedy. I figured. So I'm going to go ahead and take my two Etheria, and then these two go into the Dearth Forge. All right. Then we're going to get our wall cards. Uh, so wa my Wallow card is going to be the Scryer Skull of Gygax. I love that. That's awesome. Uh, so this is an artifact. So if you have uh, guild figures in at least two flesh locations, gain the artifact for the remainder of the game. So I have one in one flesh location. So if I get another guild figure in a flesh location at any point during the action phase, I get to keep this artifact, Pat? Yes, that's correct. And so then the artifact is going to have an ongoing effect of when gaining a mourner card, look at the top two cards of the deck and choose one, and then shuffle the other back into the deck. Okay, and then Josh, what are you getting here? I got a fight. So you've got Filth Husk the Blightmaker. That sounds like you, actually. Uh, so this is a raker at the Val Vadlam Gates, and you actually have someone there already. Uh, so you can go ahead and fight, and then those theory are going to supplement your die rolls there. Yep. And uh, if you win, you're going to get two Etheria and minus one to the Dreads Bane track, uh, Dreads Grip, I'm sorry. And then if you lose, it's the opposite. So you're going to uh, lose two Etheria and then add one to the Dreads Bane track. Dreads Grip. All right. Okay. So now we are doing the uh, court card drafting. So Josh passed us out some court cards here. And oh boy. I will... Yeah, I gotta do that. Okay, so there you go. Just for you. I made it myself. I hope you enjoy it. Okay. And then that's for you. Have fun. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Merry Christmas. And what did you leave me? You're leaving me with some interesting choices here, Josh. That's for you. Last one. And then we discard the other one. Um, sure. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'll take that. So I'm discarding that one. All right. So I have death, so I shall go first. All right. So with Mr. Death, I am going to... I'm going to go ahead and play Orgast. So Orgast, uh, Josh, go ahead and contribute to the Dearth Forge. Okay. And it's also going to minus one from the Celestial Suspicion meter. So it actually takes us down, so we'll only need six instead of seven. And uh, we're both going to gain a unity. So I gain a unity, and you gain a unity. Look at that. We're very unified right now. Your turn. I don't like when you look at my stuff. It makes me very nervous. I'm going to... Oh, okay. So Malavestros. So what are you doing with Malavestros? Um, deactivating your guy that could deactivate someone. So... Okay, so deactivate any Mourner card's ability for the rest of the round. You may perform this action once on each opponent. Okay, so you have deactivated my deactivator. So that's the Warden of Mavego. Next up, I am going to... Oh, boy. Um, hmm. So that's if I'm there. If I'm there... Sure, why not? I'm going to go ahead and I am going to... Uh, I'm going to spend two, and I am going to buy a Mortis Knighthood. Okay. Whoops. So, Josh, can you pl please pass me over the Mortis Knighthood, and I'm going to increase the Dreads Grip track by one. Your... Oh, trust me, I didn't forget that. And he's going to go in here. So your turn, Josh. 
All right. I am going to... No, we'll go with this. Okay, so you're doing the ooh, Geth Gethsemone, Gethsemane, Gethsemane, Queen of the Dead. That's a lot of stuff going on. So you're going to lose to Etheria. Yep. You are going to get one uh, flesh faction card. Ooh. You're going to steal one flesh uh, influence. I'll reduce mine. Yep. Uh, so you got the White Shiv, the Errant. So Hero's Heartache. During the cleanup phase, gain two. Uh, flesh influence. So you get two oh, flesh and two spirit, and you gain a conclave of shadows. Uh, yes, and I get a conclave of shadows, which is going to tie me with you on that track. No, I'm by myself. Yep. Uh, so then I am going to. I'm going to play Mortigul. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to gain three Etheria. Okay. Okay. So Josh, it's your turn. I'm going to play Relic. So Relic Ra Ravlatch. So you're going to look at the top two Wallows cards and keep one to discard the other, or are you doing the other one? Uh, top two. Okay. So give yourself another opportunity there. Okay. Oh, this kind of activates immediately. So uh, Marauding Harbinger Demon. So this is if you have at least two guild in your crypt at any time, you do. Immediately gain one unity. Okay, so you gain a unity. <laughs> there you go. That's a nice card to pick up there. Yep. And that's the end of your turn there. Uh, so what I shall do is I am going to... Um, Josh has quite a little group on his board. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and spend one flesh influence to move my Mortis Knighthood to Life's Ebb. And then now I control two flesh spaces... Uh, so I'm going to immediately gain this artifact. So whenever gaining a Mourner card, look at the top two cards, and then choose one, and then shuffle the other one back. So I keep this artifact now. Yep. All righty. Your turn, Josh. I'm I'm worried about Josh right now. He's being kind of mean. So whatever shall you do, Josh? Um... Hmm. I'm going to spend two spirit. Okay. You're going to move them to the Dearth Forge. The Dearth Forge. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Okay. Um, I am going to... I'm going to play Death. All right, what are you doing? So I'm going to do the top one. So I'm going to gain one of each influence, and I'm going to retain the Death figure. So then that goes away. Josh, back to you. Cleopsis, so you're going to do which one? Top one. You're going to steal two influence and then add one to the Dread's Grip. I will steal two bone from you. Okay. I am going to... Hmm. So we need... Sure, why not? I am going to go ahead and uh, spend five Etheria to draw a uh, flesh, please. You get to draw two now. Yep, I draw two, and I pick which one I want. So while I'm doing that, feel free to go ahead. Uh, I'm going to spend my two bone that I stole from you. To discard that one, please. Or that goes on the bottom of the deck, I think. Um, and I'm going to go out a card from here. Okay. So I picked uh, Outcast Poxel. So this is going to allow me for once per action phase steal an Etheria. So I'm going to do that now. So Josh, give me an Etheria. I'm not flesh faction, unfortunately, so I'll only steal one. Okay. But so it's back to your turn again. Uh, and also, I'm sorry, uh, I need you to pass me a Conclave of Shadows. Conclave of Shadows? There you go. Okay. So How much do we need right now? We need six. Six. Okay. It's my turn. It is. I'm going to play sh shard. 
Oh, shard. So which one are you doing? I will do the bottom one. So bottom one's going to be minus one to the Celestial Suspicion Meter, plus one to the Dreads Grip, and then plus one of any uh, influence you want, and then you're going to take an additional action if you so desire. Do you so desire? That's the other question. Yeah. So what are you doing? I stole death. I figured you did. So you took death, and that's... Which one are you doing? I will do the... Bottom. No, uh, um, no. you know what? I'll get the top one. So you're going to gain one of each influence, and you gain death. Yep. So that's there. I was waiting for you to do that. So now I'm going to go ahead and kill off uh, your Conclave of Shadows. The guy in the crypt? Yep. That's not very so nice. So I spend one flesh influence to do so. Okay. Um, I am going to... That's my turn. Yeah. I'm going to fight this guy. Oh, you're fighting the Blight Maker? Yeah, I forgot okay. about him. So go ahead and roll. That's a two, so that's a fail. I need a four plus? Correct. So basically, yeah. you're going to lose your two Etheria either way. It's do you want the Dreads Grip meter to go up or down? Um, because you're gonna lose two Ethereum. I want to go up. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna keep your, or you're gonna lose your Ethereum regardless, but you're gonna increase the dread script. Okay, so that goes there. Um, hmm. So I'm going to. That's a good question. What am I gonna do? I'm going to. Mm -hmm. Oh man, this is a tough one. You move you guys out on the board? Just leave. Yeah, them I'm probably gonna move them out on the board. I'm just thinking about where I want to move them to. Send them to bone location. You have all that bone influence. <sighs> I mean, send them right there. I could. Yeah. That's all. I'm gonna I'm gonna spend one bone influence to move this guy over here. So my mortis knighthood there. Back to you, Josh. Uh, I'm gonna pass. You're gonna pass. Yep. I got nothing else to do. Okay, so then I am going to. I'm going to play X Rail, the Trader Angel. So I am going to uh, subtract one from the Dread Script, and then I'm going to gain a Unity. Okay. And then he goes away, and it actually lets me take another action when I do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a, f a Flesh Influence to go to... I can't pronounce that. Hushide? Uh, a Spirit Influence, not a, a Flesh. So I'm going to spend a Spirit Influence to go to Hushide. And that will be the end of my turn. Okay. Josh? Um, I'm going to pass. And I will pass as well. All right. All right, so we have passed. It is time for us to go into the Dreads Grip Threat phase. So Dreads Grip Threat, on the right-hand side, it's at two. So that means we've got a fight for Dearth Forge going on right now. Yep, you get the roll. I know, because you're immune. Yep. I just didn't feel like moving. So. Oh, no. Uh, oh. Matt, Matt, you died there. I rolled a one. So he he dies. Oh, man. That was a bad move on my on my part. So Josh, you're gonna you're gonna watch me die and laugh. Yep. <sighs> then we're gonna chuckle. we're gonna go over to the celestial suspicion side. So uh, it's currently at uh, six. There's yep. four in the Dearth Forge. So we both need to contribute one. We need to contribute at least one. And what'd you contribute? Oh, one. Okay. Okay. So since we both contributed one, we pass. And since we're tied, uh, we're, on, we're both going to get one unity. Okay. Yes. So if one of us was the winner, we would have gotten three, three unity for the person in first place and then one for second place. You could have got a two-point gain if you spent the second I one. I could have. I thought you were going to do it, though. But you still would have got it. Doesn't matter. I thought you had... Didn't you have more Etheria? No, I only had one. Oh, I thought you had more than one. Nope, oh. I had one. I wasn't paying attention. You, it was a clear win for you. Oh, well. <laughs> Uh, so, 
Uh, then that is the s- we actually passed the celestial tide this time, so yeah. good for us. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and resolve the location. So Josh, you win Dearth Forge. You're gonna gain three. Uh, position two. So this is also you. So you're gonna t- minus one to the dread script. Okay. Plus one to the celestial suspicion. Plus one to any influence you want, and plus one unity. So. Right now, we've got 11 unity left in the pool. So okay. we're a little bit more than halfway through. This might be the final round that we're heading into. Okay. Signs up to what Pat said earlier. Three rounds, right, Pat? Mm-hmm. Uh, so position three, the Curio Cryptus. It's going to be plus one to two different uh, influence tracks. So I'm going to take one on bone and one on flesh. Okay. Uh, then position four, that's also me. So I'm going to need plus two to the same. So I'm going to get plus two on the bone. All right. Position five, this is you, Josh. You're going to gain uh, plus one... Uh, Bone mi- uh, guild figure and add one to the dreads grip or plus one bone influence. Uh, I will, I will take a mortis knight. Okay. Ah, I see what you're doing there. <laughs> All I right. Got my plan. Yep. Uh, so no one on six on seven. That's me, and you're messing up the board. Sorry. Right. Uh, so I'm gonna get plus one flesh. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take uh, the coven. Oh, the coven. Yeah. And you're going to put the track up by one? I sure am. Uh, then eight, no one. Nine, that's me, so I'm going to get plus one bone influence. Ten, uh, no one. Matt, if I can jump in, that's plus one bone influence for each bone figure you have. Oh, it's not for the ones on there. It's in total. It's in total, yes. Oh, wow, we played that wrong last time. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so you have three, four. Four. I'm going to gain four. Two, that's, three, that's nice. four. That is very nice. Uh, so then no one's on 10. I am on 11. So 11's going to be return a guild figure to someone's pool, minus one to the... And then if I do that, I get minus one. So is that return one of my own or return any one, Pat? Uh, one of your own from any location. All right. So I'm going to... You know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to send this guy back to my pool, my okay. crypt. Uh, so I'm going to minus one to that track. I'm going to gain one spirit influence. Yep. One uh, unity. One unity, and, and then you're add the one tracker. to the Celestial Suspicion tracker. Okay. And then no one's on 12. So now we're going to resolve the location. So, Josh, I'm assuming you're breaking the tie there. Yeah, I'm breaking the tie off death. Yep. Okay. So there you go. I'm getting all the Etheria. Uh, then next one is the Council of Osteomancy. I'm going to gain plus two. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to gain two to my spirit influence. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, not spirit. I'm going to add two to my flesh influence. All right. Uh, then, Josh, you're going to keep that token. Yep. I move this down by one and get a unity token. Okay. So we're down to nine unity left. And then the next one is the Conclave of Shadow. So I am going to be able to send one guild mini back, right? You get to kill it. You get to kill it. So I'm going to kill um, him. I'm back down on the tracker. So... I mean, you, you got the bonus for it, so I'm assuming that's what you wanted. Yep. Though, so. Yeah, I got it. And then my second one is I'm going to add one. Uh, so I'm going to take a flesh. Which one, though? So give me the uh, Conclave of Shadows. Thank you, sir. So increase the Dreads Grip by one as well. And right. he goes over there. Okay. Uh, so that's all of the... Oh, I'm sorry. I also did control Mortis Veth. Uh, I forgot that I had Clattershank, so I'm going to add an additional two. Okay. So I maxed out on my bone influence. So I'm going to turn for a cleanup phase, so I get two spirit and two flesh. Okay. So I'm actually maxed out on my bone influence. You're Zero doing really well again. on your... You're doing really well on your spirit influence. I am. So it is time to clean up. So we're going to go ahead and refresh our cards there. Our Wallows cards go back. We're gonna, you're going to shuffle up those guys. And we should be ready to go. All right, so give me two D6. So you're going to need to roll two D6 because you are death. That's an eight. eight. Okay, so eight. You're going to split that into three piles. And right One, now three, we need to contribute seven four, at the end. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Correct. We have to contribute seven in total. So you're making what in terms of piles? A three, three, and a two. Three, three, two. Okay. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to take the pile of three. 
assuming you're taking a pile of three. Just curious. I could be wrong. I mean, it's not that hard of a choice. <laughs> I could take two influence and just leave it to go to the... You could. But I will take the three. And then that's going to go into the Dearth Forge. So now it's time for the Wallows cards. So let's see what I got. I got uh, an event here. So this is Discover the Ambler's Bridge. So if you gain a... Which one this round? That is... Is that just any faction card, Pat? Or is I that think that's a Spirit Mourner. That's a Spirit? Right. Okay. Uh, roll a die and gain half that many uh, spirit influence rounded up. So, Josh, which one are you doing? I got another fight. Got another fight. So your fight is going to be at the Dearth Forge. You're there already, so you're good. And that one will give you influence, or I'm sorry, unity if you win. All right. So it's time for us to go draft. Hmm. Yeah, okay. That's for you. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Take it. It's for you. I made it myself. And then what's this one? This one's going to be. Do I want this one? I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take this one. Okay. So Josh, you are death. You shall go first. What are you doing there, buddy? Start with uh, Jal, the great osteomancer. Okay. So you're gonna suffer minus one bone influence. You're gonna take a bone faction card. You're gonna increase dread's grip threat meter by one, and you're gonna gain plus two etheria. All the etheria in the world. So you're gonna get another mortis knight. And that's the Marshals, Melthus, and Gignoth, uh, the hands of the Reaper Generals. So if you were not the highest contributor during the Celestial Tithe phase, gain two. Uh, you're going to gain two bone influence for that. Okay. And can you move my guy up on the Mortis Knight? Sure. Uh, yep, sure can. So back to me. I am going to play the Warden Mavego, and I'm going to cancel out your ability to... Uh, cycle cards. No, okay. I'm sorry. That's that's a lie. I'm gonna. Yeah, no, I'm gonna do that one. Cancel out your ability to cycle the cards. So the. Uh, I can't say the name. Sakafuri. Yes. Okay. It's not very nice, Matt. I not very nice. That's yeah, what I do. That's true. Your turn. Let's let's do this now. Uh, so relic ravlatch. So go ahead and look at the top two Wallows cards. Okay. Hopefully something bad. <laughs> I hope you don't get anything good. What are you doing there, buddy? Cryptus Anchor. Where is that? Uh, that's right that there. here. You got a lot of Etheria. Yeah, I'm going to get some more. So sure if you move a guild figure into the Dearth Forge, you may take up to three Etheria from the Dearth Forge. You're going to steal from the Forge? Yeah, possibly. Why would you do that? That's just not nice. Because it's fun. I mean, I don't think so. But uh, You know what? I'm going to go ahead and play the Outcast Poxel, so I'm going to go ahead and steal uh, an Etheria from you. All right. So I don't want you to have that. Go ahead. Uh, so you're playing Gethsemane, and that is going to be minus two Etheria, plus one Flesh Faction card, steal one Flesh Influence, and plus one to the Dreads Grip Threat Meter. So you're you're doubling down on that Dreads Grip Threat there. So that's uh, Colonel Tatterburn and the Nightshade Hussars. I still Flesh from you, right? Yeah. So once per action phase, look at the top card of the Wallows deck. If it is a Raker, res uh, Remove it from the game and gain two influence, uh, if not return it to the deck. So you can check the top card of the Wallows deck and possibly get some stuff. Okay, and I now have a Conclave of Shadows, so that goes there. Okay. Um, I am going to 
I'm going to go ahead and buy a spirit card, spirit faction card. So because I'm buying a spirit faction card with my five Etheria here, then I'm going to roll. And I'm, ooh, nice. I'm going to gain three spirit influence. So one, two, three. And then I look at the top two and I keep one of, uh, that I want, right? Hmm. Sure, I'll keep this one. So I kept uh, a Vacris. So this is another one where I steal Etheria. One from each player and one from the, s the I storage. Didn't, I didn't do it yet. Uh, oh, I thought it was when you, it's when you acquire it. Oh, when, oh, yeah, when it comes into play. Yep. Okay, take one so from each player and one from the supply. Oh, take okay. one from the supply. I gave you my one. Cool. Take one from the supply. Thank you. Your turn, Josh. Uh, so you got Elianostis. So which one are you doing? Uh, top one. Minus one Etheria, plus one Spirit Faction card, plus one to the Dreads Grip, and plus one of the Spirit Influence. So yeah, Spirit Influence. Did you up the threat, the Dreads Grip? Up and that's, now. Josh, that's ridiculous. Um. Yep. Yep. So you got uh, Charon. Uh, and this is, if you control the Dearth Forge, uh, you're going to gain two Etheria. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't get my uh, my Dreadsbane Order Mini from this one here. Dreadsbane? Yeah. So that's the uh, the one with the, the sword into the ground. Yep. Thank you. Okay. So then I'm going to... Hmm... I'm going to play Cleopsis. So I'm going to steal two of the spirit influence from you and then add one to the Dreads Grip. Get close to the top there, Matt. Sure am. Walk in the line. Um, I will I'll do my first fight. Okay, so that's the... No, I will not do my first fight. Okay, never mind then. I will move... I'll spend one of my spirits to move a guy into... Dearth Forge. Okay. Cool. And then if um, I may take up the three, so I'm going to take the two that's there. Okay. Because I completed that. So Voila. now I'm going to play Argas. So Josh, please contribute two to the Dearth Forge. <laughs> <laughs> and we're each going to get a Unity. Okay. Unity, Unity. Back to you. Don't steal from the forge. It's not nice. Play shard. Okay, so shard. The first option, so I'm going to drop this down one. And you're going to add a unity. You're going to add one to the celestial tithe. And then you're going to take one of any influence you want. Oh. Do that. All right. Okay, so then whatever shall I do? I'm going to play Mortigul, so Mortigul's going to give me three Etheria. Okay. Okay, your turn. Uh, I'm going to do this attack. Okay, so you're doing the fight now. Fight, 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 fight. That's failure. Let's roll, that's a roll on you, roll. So are you going to spend all that Etheria? All that precious, precious Etheria? Uh, minus one unity, plus one track. Don't do it. I'm not spending. I'm just okay. So you're in increasing the dreads grip, and then yep. unity goes down one. Like yep. I, I suck at these fights, Pat. <laughs> I want you to know. Every time I, every game I've played, I've not won a single fight. I, I think you have my luck then, because I, I tend to do the same thing. So <laughs> we'll get some new dice in there. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and spend a flesh Thanks, influence. I really appreciate it. And, uh, hey guys, just passing by to wish a fun game. We'll catch the VOD ladder. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to move this gentleman here to the Cryptus Accor. Your turn, Josh. Okay. I will spend one spirit to move my guy into the high. The high, uh, oh it's the Thanium. <laughs> that. That. Yes, that, that yeah. <laughs> Very long word, upside down. Yeah, that, that's a little <laughs> much. Uh, so then I'm going to play... Ooh, boy, what am I going to play? 
Okay, so I am going to spend two. Hmm. Hold on. I'm going to spend two bone influence to move these two guys over here. Yeah. Hmm. No. I'm sorry. I'm going to move them here. Okay. No. I'm going to move them here. Sorry. Yeah, there. Make your mind up, Matt. I, I can't make I up my mind. There's too much stuff going on All for right, me. I'm going to activate... <laughs> uh, Colonel Tatterburn. Colonel Tatterburn. So you're going to check the top card. Was it, it a fight? It is not. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for wanting to look for a fight. It's the one fight I could have actually won but, automatically. But you didn't. I didn't. You didn't. Um, so I'm now going to go ahead and play Galavarb. So I'm going to gain plus two flesh influence. Okay. I will Where no where no where What do I wanna do? I have no idea. You tell me. Actually don't tell me. <laughs> it's been too flush to go here. Interesting. Um, I will play Malavestros, <sighs> and I am going to move the mini there. So I'm going to cancel out your uh, high, an oh boy, <laughs> Anthen Anthanasium, Anthenaeum, Anthenaeum. We'll go with it. Okay. <laughs> like about Pat just sits there and he's just like... Watching you, just letting you fail. Yeah, I, I don't blame <laughs> him. It's kind of funny. It, it took me quite a while when I started working on the game to to get a lot of the lower and the character names down. So I, I I know that experience as well. All right. So. All right. All right. All right. You're you're very mean. Matt. What am I mean? What did I do? And I will spend a flush. To move this guy here. I will spend a bone to move this gentleman over here to Foxing Guard. Okay. Your turn. I think I need to pass. I'm going to pass. All right. All right. So we are into the, oh boy, the Dreads Grip phase. Yep. <sighs> We're at nine. So if there's any space with more than one person... And you ignore all of these. Yep, have I fun, know, Matt. I know that's why you were doing that. <laughs> okay, so first I'm going to roll for, oh boy, this one guy up here. So that's my one. It's a six. I'm fine. Okay. This one down here. <sighs> a one. Oh, you rolled a one? Oh, he's gone. dead. What was he? Uh, he's the Oracle. Oh, I don't care about those guys. Uh, osteomancy. Cancel <laughs> Osteomancy. I, can you take the base off of that? Yep. Uh, so then this one here. Mortis Knighthood. It's a three. He's fine. And then this one here. It's a, oh, seriously, yes. another one? Man. The other day, I did not roll nearly this bad. Uh, so that was the uh, the one that I had one on. <laughs> this guy here? Yeah. Good. All right. So now uh, we are going to do the Celestial Suspicion. So... We have, two. we have to pay our tithe. So there's two in there. We have to have seven in total. Okay. Um, so, Josh, how many are you putting in? Um, so there's two in there, so that means we need to put five in there. Yeah. So I'm going to put, uh, put one. You put one? Yep. Ready? Yep. I lied. <laughs> you put a lot in. I put a lot. I put three in. I put five. So, so you're gonna get we got we got more than enough, but I get three unity. Okay. And you uh, get one unity. But if I wasn't the highest contributor during the celestial phase, I get two bone. Ooh. So I'll take my two bone. 
So I'm going to take three unity. You get one unity. There's two unity left. So game, game's probably going to end here. Yeah. So now that was the uh, Celestial Tithes. Now we're going to resolve location. So position one, Dearth Forge, you won that. You're going to take three. No, if you control Dearth Forge, I also gain two spirit. Whew. Okay. So then position two. Uh, do you want to break the tie? Let's see. Yes. Okay. It's the only the only tie besides the knights. Yeah. And, and the money and the ethereal means nothing unless it's a tiebreaker. Right. So I will break this tie with death. Okay. So you're gonna minus one to the dread script. Okay. Plus one to any inf uh, in in any influence you want. Plus one to the celestial suspicion, and then you're gonna gain a unity. Okay. Okay. Uh, position three, that's you. You're going to gain two, plus two to uh, plus one to two different influence tracks. Uh, position four, that's me. I'm going to gain plus two to the same. Uh, so I'm going to gain plus two to the spirit influence. Okay. Uh, then that was four, then five. That's you. You can either gain one bone. Uh, guild and add one to the celestial suspicion. I mean, not the celestial uh, dreads grip. Or you can take one spirit influence or bone one bone influence. I'm sorry. So you either take a bone influence or get a bone figure. Correct. I will get a bone figure. Hmm. I'll block you from getting two influence. Later. Oh. Okay. Uh, no one's on six. I'm on seven. So I'm going to gain a flesh. So can you give me the coven? You sure you want to do that? Oh, it's at nine? Yeah, it's at nine. That's why you did that, too. Yep. No, I'm going to gain a, a flesh influence. Okay. That's fine. I think, I think that was a good call. Yeah. <laughs> um, so eight, it's blocked. Yep. Uh, nine, that's going to be me. I'm going to gain up to my max in bone. Okay. Uh, ten. That's you, so you're going to gain one flesh influence for each flesh faction you have, so that's one. Yep, that's just one flesh. Uh, so that's ten, then eleven. That's me, so I can do that if I want. You want. That would end the game. That would end the game. But the question is, am I confident that I have what it takes right now? I don't know, to be honest. Nothing else is going to end the game? No. Yeah, you're going to end the game yeah. down there later. No, right, so it doesn't even matter. Let's hope to see if you, you notice that or not, Matt. Uh, so, yeah, I will go ahead and do that. So I'm going minus to one here. minus one to that track. I'm going to gain Give one spirit. spirit influence. One unity. One unity. Then this is going to end the game. So then plus one we to have to finalize this round, and then we are all done. Right. So, so where's Knighthood? Well, hold on. Which one am I removing? It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. It, does, um, it might, depending on your mission. That's if true. your mission says to control something. Yeah, you're right. Um, um, you can move that guy because it doesn't matter if you're controlling or not, technically. That's true. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this guy. Okay. No, it's one of your guys. Oh, it's one of my guys? Yes. Oh. Then what does it matter? So I'm saying you can move that one because you don't have control. It's just over. return him to my... Yeah, return to your crypt. Okay. Okay, so I return him to my crypt. Okay. So that's all the locations. Now it is... Uh, those, you don't gain anything from cool. that since we're tied, and you already use your tie break. Yep. You don't gain anything from the other one because we're tied. You keep the token uh, for the Dreads Grip threat. Yep. Then uh, you're going to... This gonna is going to go down one, and I'm going to get a Unity token. Okay, so you can still gain Unity. You just... Yeah. It's just that the game is still ending. Uh, then I have that one, so it's increasing... So you can remove one... I could remove one from the game. Yep. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead now and... Now you can remove yeah, that I guy. Yeah, I remove this guy from the game. So I'm assuming you had a control bone locations? I did. Yes, yeah. yeah, I had an idea. And then last round, you completely... I had no bone influence, so I couldn't do anything. Um, trying to see if there's anything else. That's all of my stuff. That's all, right. all of those. So we're completely resolved, so it's time for the cleanup, uh, which is now we're just going to tally our points. Uh, I still get... You're going to gain two from that, yeah. Two from that. All right. So what was your ulterior motive? Mine was I'm going to gain four points for each bone faction location I control at the end of the game. Mine was four points for each spirit mourner card. Mourner card I had. So you're going to gain three. Th you have three uh, spirit mourner yes. cards. You're going to gain 12 points from that. Yep. So I control one 
two, three. So I'm also going to gain 12. So that's a wash. Okay, that's a wash. Okay, so how many unity tokens do you have? One, two, two three, three, four, 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 six, six seven, seven, eight. Nine, Pat, who do you think won before we figure this out? You know, up, up until the last round, I thought Matt had a pretty good lead, but it's hard to tell right now. It, it's pretty close. So how many uni tokens do you have, Matt? I have 11. I have 13. Oof. So I'm up by two. So this is what we were talking about, Pat, where Josh likes to kind of sneak up from behind and uh, and get the victory. I wanted to buy one more spirit card. I had enough. Oh, but you The couldn't. track was at nine, and I couldn't get it down. I'm just like, ugh. So Josh, I, I, I really thought you had the Ethereum objective where you do score points for all your Ethereum. Oh no, you... I did it. I was just I was just rich and I just yeah. recorded it all. So you're winning by two right now. Winning by two. All right. So what's your influence like? I have twenty two points on my influence track. I have twenty eight. Okay. That so means I win. Yes, you win. So I, I killed it with the influence. Uh, I got 15 influence because I maxed out my bone. I got 10 influence because I was uh, pretty far along in my spirit. And then I got a three bonus there for my flesh influence. I was able to get one more flesh. I would have tied you. Really? And yeah. then you would have won because you had more Ethereum. Yep, I would have. Um, <laughs> and I might have screwed up and I might have gave myself a bone with Maybe. my free one when I should have gave myself a flesh. That was really close. That was very, very close. All right, so good game, Josh. Good game. I mean, I won, but good game. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to switch back over to the main cam now. Uh, so, Pat, thank you again for joining us. We really do appreciate it. Uh, so this was our playthrough of uh, Court of the Dead Mourner's Call. Pat, yeah. is there anything else that you wanted to say about this game before we wrap it up here? Anything that maybe we didn't get a chance to show off just based off of how the game played? Um, I think you, you really explored a lot of the different elements there. Um, you know, for folks who are, are new to it, um, this is a two to four player game uh, going into the Kickstarter tomorrow. Um, so obviously some of the, the area majority stuff you guys went through with uh, four players on the board and some more figures. Uh, you, you have to use some different strategies for different player accounts that, that keep it interesting, I think. Um, and, and of course, as I said, the Kickstarter is tomorrow launching uh, 9 a.m. our time. So uh, here in, on the West Coast. Uh, so hopefully we'll see a lot of folks there. I know I saw uh, Timothy Gay on, on the, the cast. I don't know if he's still there. Yeah, I see him commenting. I, I, I have a feeling he's going to be back at number one. Uh, <laughs> I suspect he was answering some other questions as, as we went through the, the uh, uh, live stream today. Uh, so one thing that, uh, actually two things rather, that we didn't get a chance to show off that I'd like to talk about is just maxing out either of the two tracks, the Celestial Suspicion or the sure. Dreads Grip Threat. Uh, so if you max either of those two out, whoever is the cause of that, and we were close, we were managing to not hit it, especially yeah. on the Dreads Grip, uh, you get some pretty nasty penalties against you. Uh, so that's that's one of the things that uh, is kind of the cooperative management of the game to try and keep that track yeah. down. So, so Pat, you want to go real quick? What ha I think we talked about... The threshold track, but what happens when you hit the... The 10 on the Dreads Grip. So the Dreads Grip is the one that, that causes you to lose a Mourner card, and so okay. uh, your neighbor actually gets to pick which of those cards you're going to lose, uh, but then all players lose a figure of that type. So um, sometimes they, they're going to strategically choose for you to lose a Mourner card whose uh, figure type they don't have, um, so they can kind of dodge the effect there, but it, it does have a universal effect for the whole board. Okay. Um, and, of course, over on the Celestial Suspicion side, maxing out that track has a unity cost. And so it's going to hurt you some of those unity points because, you know, your your selfish actions made heaven and hell take notice. That doesn't earn you any uh, any bonus points in the underworld for doing that. And so you're going to cash in some of your unity to, to take that play. All right. And uh, so, Josh, is there anything else that uh, you wanted to ask Pat while we got him here? Not off the top of my head. I think we covered everything pretty well. Uh, so, Pat, again, thank you so much for joining us. We really do appreciate you taking out the time to answer our questions and uh, make fun of us while we play the game. That's great. <laughs> and thank all of you for watching at home. Stay tuned. We're going to be doing a soft sign-off right now and then going into our segmented first impression session yep. where we talk about our favorite aspects of the game, uh, any constructive criticisms we have, and then the most important question of the evening of would we play it again? But for now, this is going to be Twist Gaming signing off. I'm Matt. I'm Josh. Thanks again, Pat. My pleasure. Thank you.